The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Last call for entries, last chance for prizes. Parquet Margarine's $50,000 series of Name My Song contests ends this Saturday at midnight. Just four more days to name Gildersleeve's song and perhaps win up to $6,000 in cash. No limitation on entries. Send three or four if you choose from anywhere in the United States or Canada. The song in just a moment and full contest details in our next announcement. Meanwhile, remember, when you buy margarine, get the margarine that tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. And now, before we hear tonight's story, here's the great Gildersleeve with the song he's written. There's an old familiar strain, a haunting refrain that takes me back to days of yore. I see a chapel on the hill Spring's first daffodils Reflected in the mill pond From the shore I recall in memory Two names on a tree Our first kiss in that old Canoe. And though we drifted far apart, this song lives in my heart. It's a melody of love and you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'll sing the second chorus at the end of the show. <laughs> well, let's see what's going on in Summerfield. For quite a while, the great Gildersleeve had clear sailing with that pretty nurse, Catherine Milford. But then last week, the great man found they had competition. A certain young Dr. Olson. Horse doctor, I'll bet. <laughs> What's more, Dr. Olson has been ringing Catherine's doorbell almost every night. Yeah, the eager beaver. But competition <laughs> brings out the best in a man. This is the water commissioner's night to ring the doorbell, and he's going all out. He's dressed to the eyes, standing in front of the mantel mirror in the living room. Hi, right, George, I'll give that sawbones a run for his money. Hello, Anki. Oh, hello, Marjorie. Well, Uncle Mort, huh? what a gorgeous outfit. You look like you're going to lead a parade. Lead a parade? Well, come to think of it, I intend to do just that. A two-man parade. <laughs> Me in front, Olsen behind. <laughs> How are you getting along with Dr. Olsen? I'm not getting along with him. I'm a generous man, Marjorie, but this blonde pill roller has gone a little too far. Tonight, I'm going to cut him out. That's the spirit, Unky. He may have the youth, but by George, I have the experience. <laughs> Yes, sir. In Cupid's little game, it's experience that counts. You're right, Uncle Mort. And that touch of white around your temples makes you look so romantic, too. It, touch of white? Where? Oop, leftover shaving cream. <laughs> is that what it is? Here, I'll wipe it off. Yeah. You look grand, Unky. Yeah. Compared to you, that Dr. Olson will look like a scarecrow. Yeah, thank you, my dear. Well, I've got to run, Unky. There's a carnival down at Kraft Park, and Bronco's taking me. Carnival? Oh, have a good time. Bye, Unky. Hey, goodbye, Marjorie. Uh, uh, smart girl. <laughs> Let's see. Better take one last look in the mirror. Uh, she wasn't far wrong. <laughs> in that black Homburg hat, white scarf, and red carnation, you look pretty snappy. Dr. Olson, compared to Gildersleeve, you're just a scarecrow. <laughs> Think I'll stop by Peavy's and get a couple of expensive-looking cigars. You leaving now, Miss Gildersleeve? Yes, I'm on my way, Bertie. Say, hey, you sure do look fine. Oh, uh, really? I just got to admire you, Mr. Gildersleeve. 
My, you sure look dashing in that Hamburg. Bur- <laughs> uh, Bertie, this is a Hamburg. Yes, it looks real good. <laughs> well, thank you, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, the way you decked out tonight, you're going to give that doctor gentleman an awful bad time. You bet. I ain't going to wish you luck, Mr. Gilsey, because you don't need it. That sure is a beautiful Hamburg. <laughs> Uh, that birdie. Hi, George. I do look dashing in this hat. What a powerhouse. <laughs> Wonder if I should call Olsen at the hospital and tell him he's washed up. Nah, let him find out the hard way. <laughs> 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 what can I do for you this evening? Well, you might give me a couple of Coronas, Peavy. You calling on Miss Belford this evening, are you? Peavy, you're a regular Sam Spade. <laughs> How'd you guess? Well, Dr. Olson brought her here for a soda last night, and I thought it might be your turn. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think we'll have to worry about taking turns after tonight. Giving up, Mr. Gillespie? <laughs> Giving up, Peavy, I've just begun to fight. I've been pretty tolerant about him dating my girl, but I wouldn't be surprised if that doctor hasn't said goodnight, nurse, for the last time. <laughs> you <Okay>. say? <laughs> you bet. You never get anything without fighting for it. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> what? I got Mrs. Peavy without a struggle. <laughs> but this feud between Olsen and me is different. Uh, Mr. Gelson, have you uh, met Dr. Olson? <laughs> no, I've only seen him at a distance. Good evening, Mr. Peavy. Oh, good evening, Doctor. But if I never see him again, it'll be too soon. Well, I guess this is too soon, then. What? Mr. Gildersleeve, meet Dr. Olson. Dr. Olson! <laughs> <laughs> so you're Dr. Olson. Oh, so you're Gildersleeve. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm certainly glad to meet you, Doctor. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. My, my. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Peavy, I'd like a two-pound box of chocolate. Very yeah, well. Candy, eh? Uh, uh, out with another girl this evening, Dr. Olson? Another girl? Oh, no, no. I'm taking these to Miss Milford this evening. This evening? Now, wait a minute, Doctor. I thought it would be a good time to drop by and show her these x-rays. X-rays? What a sneaky way to horn in. <laughs> Here's your candy, Doctor. Oh, thank you, Mr. Peavy. Two pounds of candy should make a nice impression. <laughs> Anything besides the cigars for you, Mr. Gillespie? You bet. Give me that five-pound box of candy. Five pounds it is. Uh, come to think of it, I'd better take a five-pound box, too, Mr. Peavy. Oh, for... Uh, sorry, Doctor, I just have the one five-pounder. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. What have you got in perfumes? Yep. This could go on all night. <laughs> yes, it could. Peavy? <laughs> Take this x-ray, Catherine. Notice the fused vertebral segments of the sacroiliac. Ten o'clock, and they're still talking about sacroiliacs. <laughs> Perhaps we should go in the kitchen, Catherine. The unshaded light might be a little better. Yes, let's. In the kitchen. He better watch it. Mother? Yes, dear? You entertain Throckmorton? Oh, that will be a pleasure. We'll be right back. Uh, hurry it up. It's getting late. <laughs> I hope I'm not spoiling your evening, Gildersleeve. Oh, no. Good, good. After we've read this x-ray, we can sit around and chat for an hour or two. He's trying to wear me down, is he? Well, I can sit around just as long as he can. Nothing wrong with my sacroiliac. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't think you're having a very good time. Well, Mrs. Milford, looking at pictures of skeletons isn't exactly my idea of a pleasant evening. I know. Isn't it awful? Looking at people's bones. It wasn't fair of Dr. Olson to come over tonight. Well, he'll leave sometime. I'll wait him out. Mr. Gildersleeve, do you know what one of my bows used to do? No. Well, when I was a girl, I held open house every Sunday afternoon. He'd get everyone to go home early. Then he'd come back. 
He would. <laughs> <laughs> and I think doctors should get to bed early, don't you? Mrs. Milford, I'm way ahead of you. Uh, X-rays all red? Yes, they were wonderful. Yeah, I'll bet. Now, Gildersleeve, we can sit down and have a nice, long talk. Uh, uh, Dr. Olson, I was just thinking, it's a little late. Uh, shouldn't doctors get to bed early? What? You need a steady hand with a scalpel, you know. <laughs> and I'm a little tired. <laughs> Well, if you think we should be leaving... Oh, must you both go so soon? I guess we'd better, Catherine. I'll be in touch with you. So will I, Catherine. Good night, Mrs. Milford. Good night, Dr. Olson. Good night, Mrs. Milford. Uh, good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you boys are leaving. Thanks for the candy and perfume. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, uh... Dr. Olson, my car's over this side of the house. Oh, I parked mine around the corner. Uh, well, I'll say good night. Good night, Gildersleeve. Get an old train on the train that takes me back to the day. Hi, George. Mrs. Milford's a good friend to have. Olson should be in his car by now. I'll just tiptoe back up on the porch and wait for him to drive away. It's dark. He won't see me. Who's that? Olson. Gildersleeve. What are you coming back for? Me? I came back for my hat. What are you doing here? Oh, I came back for my x-rays. I hate to mention this, Olson, but you have your x-rays under your arm. I have? Well, you have your hat on your head. <laughs> okay, you win. Let's go home. <laughs> Somebody at the door, Bertie. I'm coming. Oh, good evening, Judge. Good evening, Bertie. Good evening, Gilda. Uh, hello, Judge. Well, I thought you'd be out with Miss Milford again this evening. No, she has to work tonight. I hear that handsome young Dr. Olson is trying to beat your time, Gilda. He isn't beating my time. Just never lets me see Catherine alone. Even horned in last night. Oh, that doesn't seem fair. He should have plenty of opportunities to show his devotion at the hospital. What? I can see them now, holding hands over an appendectomy. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, if you came all the way over here... No, to no, make... no, Gilday. There's a carnival down at the park tonight, and I thought Leroy might enjoy going. Well, that's very kind of you, Horace, but Leroy's in bed with a cold this evening. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, he's having a carnival of his own, I guess. He has his turtle and the cat in bed with him. <laughs> uh, telephone. Excuse me, Horace. Hello? Is that you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, hello, Mrs. Milford. Mr. Gildersleeve, I have a little secret for you. What, another one? Catherine's not going to the hospital this evening. Oh, she isn't? They gave her the evening off. I thought you might just drop over. Well, thank you very much. I'll do that. And remember, you haven't talked to me. A little bird told you. Sure, sure. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Goodbye, bird. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about you and I walking over to the carnival? Uh, can't do it now, Judge. Just got a hot tip. Catherine's alone this evening. This is my big chance. Well, good luck, Gilday. Guess I'll run down to the park. You do that, Judge. And I'll run over to Catherine's. And I do mean run. <laughs> <laughs> got the inside track this evening, thanks to Mama Milford. I'll just have to start bringing her candy. <laughs> Who's that? Well, Gildersleeve. Olson! We meet again. Olson, how did you know Catherine had the night off? Very simple. I make out the nurse's schedule. Oh. <laughs> well, Clarence. Oh, Throckmorton. Well, this is a surprise. Hello, Catherine. Hello, Catherine. <laughs> Oh, won't you boys come in and sit down? You bet. By George, I'm going to sit him out this time if it takes all winter. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Only four days left to get in on Parquet Margarine's $50,000 Name My Song contest. 
Send in a name for Gildersleeve's song. You might win up to $6,000 in cash. The fifth and finally final weekly prize contest ends this Saturday at midnight. This week alone, Parquet Margarine is awarding four $1,000 cash prizes, 20 $100 cash prizes, 50 $20 cash prizes, 200 $10 cash prizes, and there's that grand prize of $5,000 extra. $6,000 in all to the person who names Gildersleeve's new song. Send your title with the red end flap of a package of Parquet Margarine to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Your dealer has entry blanks with full instructions and the complete words to Gildersleeve's song, or plain paper will do. Be sure to include your own and your dealer's name and address. But hurry, send in all the entries you can. The more entries, the more opportunities to win. Each entry must be accompanied by a parquet flap and postmarked before midnight Saturday. Remember, just a few simple words, maybe only a single word, might be worth up to $6,000 to you in cash. Well, it seems the great Gildersleeve has more competition than he can handle. Every time he thinks he has a date with his pretty nurse, his rival, the intern, shows up. As we rejoin them, they're still sitting in Miss Milford's parlor, waiting each other out. That's a pretty dress you're wearing this evening, Catherine. I'm glad you like it, Throckmorton. Lovely. But the dress isn't nearly as pretty as the girl who's wearing it. Ooh la la. <laughs> Medical school French. <laughs> well, now that we're all together again, what should we do? Oh, I don't know. What can three people do? Well... See, there's a carnival down at the park. Personally, I don't care much for carnivals. If they fascinate you, Dr. Olson, why don't you run along? I think carnivals are fun. Oh, you do? Uh, Fine. We'll go to the carnival, Catherine. And if you don't like carnivals, Gildersleeve, well... What makes you think I don't like carnivals? I'll get your coat for you, Catherine. I have it. Oh, thank you, Clarence. Hmm? He's fast on his feet, too. <laughs> I love carnivals. This is a wonderful idea, Clarence. Glad I thought of it. Well, I was about to think of it. Oh, look, there's one of those fortune-telling machines. Shall we try it? Good idea. I think I have some nickels, Catherine. Oh, never mind, Gildersleeve. I have one right here. He doesn't miss a trick. Ladies first, Catherine. Thank you. What do I do? Oh, we just drop in the nickel and wait for the card to come out. Oh. I can't wait to read it. What does the card say, Catherine? Hmm? Well, it says, um... A tall, blonde man will figure prominently in your future. Oop. Does that sound interesting? Yes, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're next, Gildersleeve. I'll put the nickel in. I have my own nip nickel, thanks. Oh, no, no, this treat on me. Three, five cents. Here we go. <laughs> what does yours say, Throckmorton? Huh? Uh, a tall blonde man will figure prominently in your future. <laughs> you were terrific throwing those baseballs, Clarence. You didn't miss one. Oh, there's really nothing to knocking over those milk bottles. <laughs> nah, I just lost control momentarily. <laughs> Hope they find those baseballs. Well, what do we try now, Gildersleeve? There must be something you can do. Hey, uh, step right up and swing the mallet and ring the bell. Hey, here's something easy, Gildersleeve. Let's try it. Huh? Hiya, folks. You men like to show the little lady who's got the muscles? Yeah. Now, here's a fella's got the bill for it. Muscles all over it. Yeah. Who, me? Take a try, Buster. Ten cents, three for a quarter. Well, all right. We'll take two and I'm buying. Go ahead, Olson. Oh, no, no, no. You go. Losers first. Losers first. Here, Catherine, hold my coat. All right. Here he goes. Watch that mallet. Uh, give me plenty of room. One, two... Hi, mister. Oop. Get out of my way, little boy. Is that hammer heavy? You bet it is. Now, go on, scoot. Beat it. 
friend of yours, Throckmorton? I never saw him before. Look out now. I'll start all over again. Here he goes. Watch him swing. You betcha. One, two. I can count to 50. What's the matter, Gildersleeve? I can't do anything with this miniature Milton Berle standing there. <laughs> uh, little boy, look, here's a dime. For me? Yeah, now you take this and go buy something. Get some cotton candy. Where? Uh, over on the other side of the park. Way over, just keep going. Gee, thanks, mister. <laughs> he was cute. Yeah, now... Uh... All right, folks, here he goes again. Yeah, I'll get it this time. One, two... Well, hello, Gilda. <laughs> Judge Hooker. What are you doing, Gilda? I'm shoeing a horse. Now stand back, will you, and keep quiet. Oh, a test of strength. Look out, Judge. All right, folks, here he goes again. Stand back, the man looks dangerous. Uh, by George, I am. One, two, three. Where'd it go? Up to the place marked Maiden Ladies, Old Duffers, and Large Midgets. <laughs> Shall I win another doll for you, Catherine? Oh, no, Clarence. We have enough. Yeah, I can't carry any more. Oh. Gotta find something I can do better than this guy. Uh oh, there's the tunnel of love. But I can do that better than he can. Uh, Catherine, look over there. The Tunnel of Love. Huh? Oh, that's where you go for a boat ride in the dark. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to go through that, do you? Uh, well, it might be fun. <laughs> Besides, I'm water commissioner. They're using our water. <laughs> <laughs> Say, where's Oli? Here I am. I'm just buying tickets for the tunnel. Let's go, Catherine. Oh, what an operator. Now, wait a minute, Dr. Olson. I get to take Catherine first. Why should you? Well, you remember what you said. Losers first. That's right, Clarence. But... I trapped him. <laughs> Give me the tickets, Olsen. Come on, Catherine. Let's go. <laughs> oh, don't take it so hard, Olsen. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, it's the kid again. <laughs> isn't, isn't this the same little song? <laughs> he gave me a dime. I went to buy some cotton candy. Now I'm lost. <laughs> well, uh, don't cry, little fella. Uh, did you get your cotton candy? Give me your hand. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> what's your name, little boy? Billy. <laughs> well, what's your last name, Billy? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, what's your daddy's name? Daddy. You know. <laughs> Poor little fellow. Yeah. Wherever there's a crowd, this always happens. Catherine, you and Mr. Gildersleeve wait here. I'll take them down to the carnival officials. No, no, I want my mommy and daddy. Yes. Now, wait a minute, Olson. Certainly he doesn't want to go to any carnival officials, and I don't blame him. Come here, little man. Well, what are you going to do? We can't leave him here. Somebody has to take him. Well, uh, I guess you and Catherine better go on. <laughs> no use letting the tickets go to waste. Come on, Catherine. The boats are leaving. Oh, Bye, Frockmorton. Yeah. Goodbye. Have a good time. Ta-ta. What's the matter, mister? You lost, too? Yeah, I lost again. <laughs> Come on, little man. Now, you keep an eye out for your mommy and your daddy. I'm watching the milk again. Yeah, all right. I'm going to put a curve on this one. You got him wrong. Gee, you're good, mister. Not bad. <laughs> Here he goes. Watch him swing the mallet. He test him straight. Now you watch out for your folks now. I'm watching Make the belly. Well, you better stand over here so you can see better. You're sure strong, lifting that big hammer. Uh, one, two, three. Oh. Yeah, you did it! Yeah, why, George, I did. <laughs> why couldn't I do it before? Huh? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Come on, Bill, let's go over to the Coke stand and celebrate. Hey, mister, there's my day! There's my day! Okay, see you later, Billy. Bye-bye. Uh, 
<laughs> Look at that little fella go. That's his daddy, all right. Look at the way he's hugging him. I should have gotten married. <laughs> uh, uh, might as well go home. Hello, Throckmorton. What? Oh, Catherine. I see you found the little boy's father. Yeah, there they go. Look at him hanging on to his daddy's hand. Throckmorton, I'd like to hang on to yours. Huh? Yeah, uh, where's uh, Olson? Clarence? Oh, I put him on the merry-go-round. Told him I had to make an important call. Did you make it? I'm making it now. Pick up your receiver. Uh, oh, me? <laughs> that was pretty nice of you, giving up your fun to help that little boy. Well... And as far as I'm concerned, it's just like Clarence said. Losers first. Losers first? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on, Catherine, let's get lost. <laughs> Time's running out. We have just 30 seconds to urge you once again to act now in Parquet Margarine's $50,000 Name My Song Contest. You have until midnight this Saturday to send in the title for Gildersleeve's song that might win you up to $6,000 in cash. Remember the address, Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't forget the red end flap of the Parquet package with each entry. Send in three or four entries, but hurry. Your entries can be postmarked from anywhere in the United States and Canada, but they must be stamped before midnight this Saturday. From now on, all winners will be announced by mail. Imagine the thrill you'll get if you're the grand prize winner. Just think what you could do with $6,000 in cash. And there's still time to get that six-inch plastic recording of my song, folks. Just send 25 cents in the red end flap of a parquet package to Parquet Margarine, Box 1, uh, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. 5167. And you'll have a nice souvenir of this program with my picture on the label. <laughs> <laughs> the same address as the contest, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. And uh, now here's the last chorus of my song. In my reverie it seems A summer moonbeam Or fields that wander on and on where a lane that we called ours Hid among the flowers And welcomed cooling showers Before the dawn There's a lilac trellis gate Where each night we'd wait To breathe the fragrance in the air and so wherever I may roam, my thoughts will turn to home. For I know that love and you are there. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. You bet. Which suits your taste? Mustard that's mild, delicately spiced, or sharp, snappy mustard with zing in every bite? Either way, you like Kraft prepared mustard, for there are two kinds. Salad mustard, tangy but gentle, and Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Either works magic in bringing out hidden flavor, or when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying show, is next.